In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the issue of consumers and trust in the financial services industry in general and what that might mean for IFAs and how that can actually be an opportunity for advisors. So there have been four quite significant attacks on the financial services industry in the, in the press just this last month. So I wanted to examine each of those in turn, um, see what it meant for the industry and have a think about what it meant for advisors as well. Um, the first attack and the one that actually got the most attention within the financial services industry at least was from Greg McKelmont. Um, he's the shadow pensions minister for Labour. Um, and he basically said that providers had to put a stop to rip off pension charges and what he stated was if they were not able to address this issue by the time Labour came to power um, they would force them to. So he was implying that they would legislate in some way to uh, address the issue of rip off pension charges. Now I guess he was, he was looking for a headline there, um, it obviously is going to play very well to the voters. Um, coming across as a consumer champion, but he does have a point. There are many pensions out there that have very high charges and the charges, they're not exactly hidden, but they're not 100% transparent and it, it is difficult for many consumers to actually understand what they're being charged for their pensions. So this is something that's happening in the accumulation phase. Um, it's significantly reducing the amount of money that people can save within their pensions and of course it's something that um, it's a bad headline that reduces trust in the industry and particularly in the idea of saving in a pension. Um, the second attack came from Ros Altman and this was in the Daily Mail so it got much more attention with um, the man on the street and she was really focusing in on annuities and just what poor value they represent at the moment. And by her calculations, if you were to buy an annuity at 65, on average you'd need to live to 82 to get your money back and 90 before it actually became good value. And she made some quite important points. Um, her main point was that it's very difficult for consumers to understand annuities they're impacted by things like inflation, um, rising life expectancy, quantitative easing. Um, there's also factors in the pricing of annuities um, and factors that consumers don't understand that are dictating how much income the annuity is going to pay them. So these are things like the, the level of um, interest, the level of interest rates and the level of return that the life company is going to get investing the money. Um, it's also things like the risk margin that the life company builds in and their own profit margin. Um, those last two in particular, um, they're not transparent, they're not something that's made clear to the consumer. So we don't know how much of their own margin for risk the life company is building in and we don't know how much of their own profit that they're building in. We do know that annuities are a very profitable business for life companies. So they're very poor value for consumers and a further point Ros Altman made was that if you had any other financial purchase like this where there was an element of compulsion, it was a permanent decision and you were at risk of um, either having a very poor value investment or in fact losing all of your capital, this would be slapped with high risk warnings all over it um, and you would really you know, the best course of action would be to take advice on making the purchase. But this doesn't seem to exist with annuities. So this was another negative headline, this time around the decumulation phase. Um, and again, it's something that um, shows the financial services industry in a bad light. And it's going to be something that's going to really put people off the idea of saving, and particularly again, saving into pensions. Um, the third headline probably got less attention, but it came from Gina Miller of the True and Fair campaign. Um, and it was related to the Investment Management Associations, the IMA's SORP, or Statement of Recommended Practice. And this was a statement of recommended practice for accounting. And what was meant to come out of this was a single figure 
that investors could use to assess just how much it costs them to invest in a particular fund. And um, what Gina and the True and Fair campaign were stating was that this was really just the whitewash. You still can't get a single figure. It's still very difficult to understand in the entirety just how much it costs you to be invested in the fund. There's still a lot of hidden costs like transaction costs which we've, we've covered in separate videos. So this was something related to the accumulation phase again and again any sort of consumer or the man on the street looking at this um, again would think um, the financial services industry were just set up to um, give them high charges, take their money um, and not be very transparent about it in the process. So it's another thing that's destroying trust in the financial services industry. The final issue I wanted to look at was from Tony Hazel who writes in FT Advisor. So this one was just in the industry press, it wouldn't have been seen very widely. Um, but it was just a column he wrote where he, he, um, he touched on a case he'd been involved in uh, where basically a gentleman had been missold a pension that had extortionately high charges. Um, Aviva was the, the current provider. Um, but they, they'd inherited this business through a series of mergers and takeovers. But Tony's point was, yes, Aviva will be able to say that the mis-selling took place 25 years ago, way back in the past, and they don't work like that anymore. But they have still been content to collect those high charges for the preceding 25 years. And so, if the financial services industry really is going to be fair, and transparent and if it's going to li live up to the sort of rhetoric that it's putting out there at the moment about fairness and transparency what it would really need to do would be to go through the entire all of its book of business and root out all of these old cases where they have been missold in the past and where the charges are just extortionately high um, and address them and you know I really really agree with him it's a really key point um, it would be a much, much more powerful statement about how financial services businesses were going to be more transparent, more honest, deal with their clients on a much fairer basis. It would be a much more powerful statement than any amount of advertising or marketing that they can put out there. So in summary, um, where am I going with all of this? Well, you know, four pieces of bad news for the financial services industry, but I do think it can be turned around to present an opportunity for professional advisors. I think there might be a tendency for the general public to lump financial advisors in with bad bankers and just everything negative that they hear about the, about the financial services industry. But really, advisors can be on the consumer's side and should be on the consumer's side and they can help them pick their way through this minefield um, they can help them with low-cost investment solutions, they can help them with low-cost pension wrappers, they can advise them on retirement at purchasing the correct annuity for that individual and they can protect their consumers from the worst excesses of the financial services industry. So, you know, IFAs really should be consumer champions um, and I think there needs to be some effort from the advisory community to sort of paint themselves in that light, differentiate themselves from these kind of excesses and these mistakes that the providers and the institutions are making and demonstrating to ordinary consumers that they can really help them and really add value um, by working with them and by consumers working with advisors.